Oh, there's Caudle, who's in the game at wide receiver. He gets the handoff, goes deep down, oh, and Adams, he caught it inside the five at the two-yard line. Number 46, McCaleb now in there, they'll take the handoff. He keeps it, avoids one man at midfield, 45, 40, 45, 30, there goes Cam, 15, 10, 5, 9, touchdown! The receivers to each side, Newton. Face runs it straight ahead, runs over a man. He's in. Touchdown, Auburn. Side of midfield. Here's Cam on the fake, right up the middle, breaks the tackle, and the boy stays on his feet. 35, 30, 25, 20. Peterson, the one man to beat at the five. He is in. Touchdown, Auburn. Flash that smile, Cam. Tigers lead. Wow. Makes that handoff, steps back, wants to throw, goes downfield. Zachary makes the catch, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Auburn! 70 yards! Newton runs to his right, looking, looking, throws it deep downfield, into the end zone, tipped up, and caught! It's caught! Darvin Adams off the deflection, touchdown, Auburn! Josh Harris, the snapper, he'll call to the place, he'll hold it. Byron waits for the snap of the place. There it is, the kick is up, the kick is good! Auburn wins! 22-19! The Auburn Tigers are on top of the college football world, and the view from up here is sheer perfection. The Auburn football teams of the 1980s, 90s, and early 2000s were loaded with blue-chip talent. Bo Jackson, Andre Bruce, Tracy Rocker, Ben Tamborella, Takeo Spikes, and Cornell Williams were among 31 different Tigers named to All-American teams over three decades. And all three coaches during the bulk of that time frame, Dye, Bowden, and Tobeville, posted winning percentages of 680 or higher. Yet despite all the talent and all the winning, two undefeated seasons among them, what eluded the school in that era was the crystal ball proclaiming Auburn the outright undisputed national champions of college football. And as the first decade of the 21st century drew to a close, most pundits believed the Tigers were no closer than they had been in years prior, breaking in a new coach, a new system, and a new quarterback. But this quarterback was unlike any other, and the winding road he'd taken to the plains caused him to burn with a deep sense of urgency, to win now, win big, and give the Auburn family a season they'd never forget. Cameron Newton was born four years after Bo Jackson won the Heisman, was only four when the 1993 Tigers posted an undefeated record. 15 when they ran the table again in 2004. While the Auburn family was busy enjoying SEC championships and winning seasons, but falling just shy of the ultimate prize, the man who'd eventually lead his team to a shot at the BCS promised land was growing up south of Atlanta in College Park, the middle of three children belonging to Cecil and Jackie Newton. Born and raised in, in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, College Park to be exact. You know, life was for me at, at, at a childhood age is, you know, wake up. Um, and I, I rarely had days that I just wake up and, you know, sleep in. You know, my parents did an excellent job with, with keeping me busy and keeping me doing something. It's a very family oriented community. Um, everyone supports one another. It's, um, you know, it, it takes a village to raise a kid and every, you know, everyone in the community, you know, lends a helping hand. As a child, if you know, one of my friends asked me to spend a night over at their house. You know, I was always go, always go to my mom and you know ask mom, you know, can I go spend spend a night at so and so's house? And you know, she would always know that I'm you know going behind my father's back. So she would always say, well, what did your father say? His dad, great great man to be around. He's always a person I talk to. You know, father father figure always around. During the childhood days, he would always motivate me, always press me to you know go. F further and beyond. To this day, I still coach, coach, because it's like he was just always there for me or 
around all the time with us when we was coming up. He would always give me quotes and, and, and mottos and you know things to live by, you know, because he is a, a preacher, a ordained minister. Dad is is you know, it's very supportive. You know, the family, the whole family is very supportive. The mom and dad, they're great people. Um, I mean, I couldn't find, you know, a better group of parents. Church was a must go, and there was no, no denying that we were going to wake up each Sunday morning at 8, make it to the Sunday school, make it to the, you know, the 11 o'clock service, go get dinner, and come right back for the 6 o'clock, you know, evening service. Over the years, I can look back and say I'm a strong believer in Jesus Christ. And, you know, through those times, I know, you know, my, my faith in religion is, is very big in my life. Outgoing and playful among family and friends, Cam transformed into something entirely different on the football field. The young man who'd eventually run roughshod over SEC defenses started out wrecking havoc from the other side of the ball. Growing up, I've just loved the passion of football. I, you know, watching the Falcons, you know, I would just love and admire the players that were on the team, uh, the individuals that, you know, somewhat was elevated their game, played to a different level. Oh, well, we played uh, recreational football together, little league. Cam was our linebacker, and he was one of the hardest hitting kids we had at the park. So whenever you got in trouble at school or your parents told the coaches you got in trouble, you had to go against Cam. I remember I was around what, 10 years old and um, I was playing linebacker and running back. And every single time I touched the ball, I scored. And it was like, you know, not no just one yard runs. I was going for, what, 40, 50 yards. Then, like our last year, our 140 pound, Cam decided he wanted to play quarterback. I started quarterback, he got hurt the second game of the year. So Cam was our quarterback, and for then on, he'd been the quarter, he'd been the quarterback. So uh, I, I've learned at a young age that losing sucks, and you know, winning is just you know the 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 pinnacle of you know, of, of a great feeling. Standing a head taller than most boys his age, and possessing obvious athletic skills, Cam was given the opportunity to advance quickly in youth and grade school sports. Before long, he found himself going toe-to-toe -to -toe with kids much older than himself. I started playing varsity in the ninth grade, uh, and I had the unique ability to play and, and be fortunate enough to play with my oldest brother. Uh, my oldest brother was a senior at the time. Well, my impression of Cam when I first met him, he was just a, a bright-eyed kid, you know, just fully energetic. So by the time I get to my age level, around the junior year, the senior year, I'm supposed to be killing. And I refuse, if, if I'm 16 at the time, another 16-year-old being on my level. He was about 5'11", within a year, he's 6'2", 6'3", and all of a sudden now I'm looking at him, he's looking down at me like coach, you know, so. <laughs> and, you know, I had to grow up and, and, and my skills had to grow up also. After his junior season, and we actually made it again to the second round of the playoffs. Went down to Statesboro, which is, you know, ha have a great program. We beat them. I think they hadn't lost at home in like six years. From that game there, everyone knew that Cameron Newton was the real deal. College recruiters were captivated by the jaw-dropping exploits of Westlake High School star quarterback. But Cam ended his recruitment quickly, intrigued at the possibility of suiting up for the Florida Gators and head coach Urban Meyer. Well, he wanted to go. We were always happy for him. So I know it was like one, he went on his visit to Florida and came back and he was like, man, I love Florida. This is what I want to do. This is where I want to go. And it was the beginning of the season. I was like, oh, Cam, you got many more places you can go. Uh, just visit to see if you like. He was like, this is where I want to be. The university I will be attending after graduating is the University of Florida. But things didn't go as planned in Gainesville. After earning the backup spot and limited playing time behind eventual Heisman winner Tim Tebow, Cam injured his ankle in the 2008 season opener and opted for a medical redshirt. Some poor off-the-field choices later in the fall led to his suspension and eventual decision to transfer. Cam says he learned and matured from a difficult experience. Looking to restart his life and athletic career,
Cam returned to basics, far from the bright lights of Southeastern Conference football at Blinn College in Brenham, Texas. I remember when I was in junior college and just thought like, man, my career could be over if I don't just put my head down and just focus on, you know, what I have to do. I balled out of high school, so it's going to be the same thing, and, and it wasn't. So that was a learning curve for me, just to understand that whatever I was doing to get me there, it wasn't going to be the same thing. I had to elevate my whole uh, demeanor as far as, you know, trying to get on the field. You know, it would be an opportunity for him to grow. And that's what he needed, you know, to go to a place where there was there were no distractions, you know, a place where nobody knows your name um, and he can just find himself. I, I grew up not on the field because that bland era did to me more so on a personal note, more so than what it ever could do on the field. And I think that was his transition and, you know, from being a young man to a man. And I think that's what the whole reason for me going there was. You know, I had to be a man. I, I, I use that as my whole transition as far as, you know, maturing as an overall person. And it started in my mind. The focus and effort paid off. In his only season with the Buccaneers, Cam passed for more than 2,800 yards and ran for an additional 650. His 22 passing touchdowns helped Glenn reach and win the National Junior College Championship. With big time recruiters once again interested in his services, Cam opted for a program with an immediate opportunity for playing time and an offensive mastermind calling the shots. High school, your crutch is you got time. Junior college, you ain't got no crutch. It's, it's a business decision. You got to play right away if you want to, if you have any hopes and dreams to make it to the next level. So whichever team that recruited me, they had to know that from, from Jump Street. And um, I remember it like it was yesterday as far as when Coach Luper, the running back coach that's there at Auburn right now, he came in with, and I call him Cyclops, because he came in with this confidence that, like, man, I'm going I'm gonna get you. But he came in with some orange glasses. Meanwhile, while he's talking to me, I'm like, all right, Coach, let me – let me just stop you there. Like, I know everything about Auburn. I know about the Tumors Corner. I know that it's one hour away from Atlanta. I was like, I knew all that, Coach. Like, you tell me that I'm going to get an opportunity to play, and I'm there. Not there, but I, I was saying I would consider your school. And the funny thing is, before I left, I remember me telling my father that. I said, Pop, pulled him aside, and I was like, you know, I respect you so much. You're a man of God, and I understand that you know, whatever you feel as if where I need to go, that's where I'm going to go. And I said, Pop, what you got for me? He said, Cam, we're going to Auburn. Took a second, like, what? Auburn? 87,000. Eagle is all right. You know, they uniforms is well, all right, but I ain't going there for no uniform. They got 22 seniors coming back. They got a solid line. All right, I'm going. Gene Chizik was named Auburn's head football coach in December 2008, an unpopular choice with some in the Tiger fan base following his dismal two-year tenure at Iowa State. But Chizik was no stranger to Auburn or winning football. Having served as Auburn's defensive coordinator during its undefeated 2004 season and winning the national championship a year later in the same role, at Texas. Chizik was tested and proven in the coaching ranks and felt sure he knew how to take Auburn football to the next level. He's a great football coach, obviously, but uh, what I appreciate more than anything is the way he's trying to, um, and he is successfully building these guys physically, mentally, and spiritually stay so they can be better. Well, I think that I had a little bit of a, of a jump on many people who would have had the opportunity uh, to, to be the head coach at Auburn simply because I had been here before. I understand the culture. I understand the way that people think. I understand the family values and the hard work values that go along with this place. And one of the reasons this job was so intriguing to me always out of all my stops uh, along the way was that I believe in all the same things. He's a great X's and O guy. I mean, he's probably one of the best in the business on, on the defensive side of the football. Um, he's a great leader. He cares about people. He cares about our players, and they know that. 
What is the Italian look? Got the slick hair back. Like it's a movie star out there, man. You know, got the blue eyes, got the big chin. And it's like, oh, I'm Coach Chizik, head coach of Auburn. And it's like, he's he's perfect. But as, as, as being able to relate to his players, number one. Chiz is very engaged. You know, I hear about head coaches that really don't do much and kind of sit back, you know, and are the head man, but kind of let people do their thing. But, you know, Chiz knows in everything. He's checking on offense, checking on the special teams. He's an all-around coach, and he's a player's coach, you know. A family man, um, great Christian beliefs. Uh, and that's one of the big things that got me here is that Coach Ma or Coach Chizik came in and uh, just really pre preached family from the get-go. And that's how I was raised. I think is the same way he was raised, and I think everyone on this team was raised that way, is that it's family first, and that's what you get with Coach Chizik. He demands so much, and you want to give him so much. You never want to be on, on that side where you're like, oh, man, I'm letting Coach Chizik down. You know, you're always trying to do what you have to do to make sure that, that, that you're stepping up, not, for, not just for yourself, but for him, too. He brings so much more to the game just, you know, than football. And it's just, he just, it, it makes you want to play for him. It makes you want to get down there in the trenches. It makes you want to work hard because of the person he is and what he brings to the team. Auburn showed sure signs of improvement in the first year of the Chiswick era. With an imaginative offense and an aggressive defense, the Tigers reeled off five straight wins before dropping three to SEC foes. Auburn posted an 8-5 record, finishing the year with a win in the Outback Bowl. Auburn fans were delighted to learn that Chiswick had selected an equally capable counterpart to manage the offense. Coordinator Gus Malzahn demonstrated in only one season that he was as good a play caller as anyone in college football. There are people that can coach, and there are people that can see the entire field and coach. And, and then there are people that can see the entire field and coach and are teachers. That's what Gus is. Uh, he's the best offensive coordinator in the country, so uh, I think that you know his body of work, uh, whether it be at Auburn or wherever he's been, I think it pretty much speaks for itself. When I first got here, I didn't know who Coach Malzahn was and stuff like that. You know, I had a uh, high school coach telling me, you know, he, he runs a good offense and this and that and this and that. But when I, when I got actually got to get on the field with him, and like. It's like he's a genius. Like it's like we can't lose whatever he call. But he is a hundred percent football. Like you go to you go to his, you go to his house, eat dinner. One of those things is going to be about personal things. Everything else is going to be about football. Um, attention to detail and like I said, the, the, the strictness of a coach. I think that's one of the things that makes his offense so successful. It just gives you confidence, you know. Um, you know. You know he's going to come up with a game plan that's going to make you be successful. The Auburn family hoped for brighter days in 2010. With a full year of experience under the existing coaching staff and a talented JUCO transfer named Cam Newton. Chizik and Malzahn had high hopes for their new quarterback, but they were nervous about giving him too much to handle too quickly. Of course, uh, he made a great impression uh, on our coaches early. I mean, we got a chance to go to his house and sit down with him. And before we left, he actually asked if uh, he could pray for our coaches. We got in a circle in his house and held hands, and he prayed for us. And, of course, that's a first, you know, for me. And uh, the more we're around him, he's just one of those positive people. He's always got a smile on his face. Uh, you know, the world needs more people like Cam Newton. When, when he came here, we really didn't know what we were getting. We knew we had a big, strong quarterback who can who's, who can run, who's athletic. And but going into that spring, we didn't know exactly what his capabilities were because he was no contact during spring. We didn't want him getting banged up, and then so we really didn't know that whole athletic side that he had and the plays that he could make and what he was capable of. And the first day he got here, you know, you could just see it. He was just ready to work. And you can never argue with a guy that's ready to work. You know, he'll laugh with you. You know, he'll he'll clown on you. You know, we'll play the video games. He'll do all that. But you could tell when his light switch came on that he was going to go out there and ball. When he stepped in the huddle, all the rest of them got better. And uh, he not only made the offense better, he made the defense better too. You know, physically, he's just a very imposing figure when he walks through the door. I mean, he's six foot six. He's two hundred and fifty pounds, and. Uh, you know, the first time I laid eyes on him, I said, wow, you know, can this guy really, at this size, really play quarterback? And uh, obviously that was, that question was answered. Auburn opened the 2010 season at home against Arkansas State. Using a limited offensive game plan, the Tigers racked up 34 points in the first half. 
including a spectacular 71-yard run by Newton in the second quarter on his way to 171 yards and two TDs rushing for the game. He had three touchdown passes and already won 52 to 26. We have our players, man, when we taught ourselves, you know, we finna go out here and we gonna play our hardest no matter who we playing. You know, we're not taking nobody light, and that's what we did. We went out there and we, uh, we made our mark on our first game. Our first game was the, the crowd, I think. When I first walked out of the tunnel and, and I'm just going out there and you just look around and you're just like, this is not high school anymore. Like, this is serious and there's so many people out there cheering. It was my competitive juices were flowing and, and I was just ready to go out there and play. You know, I was nervous a little bit, but, you know, I was just really antsy just to get out there in front of Jordan Hare, in front of the, you know, the 90,000, you know, some of our fans and just play. Just to be out there for the first time, man, it's like I do my ritual. I'm out there on the field, it's like, man, I am truly blessed to be around so many great people, but at the same time, it's like all eyes on me and it's leading up to this point, like, and I knew, leading up to this game, everybody wanted to see, you know, what Cam was going to do. So Cameron, uh, obviously, you know, had a great day running the football, whether it was a quarterback scramble or a design run. Only five days later, the Tigers traveled to Starkville for a tough early season SEC West road game against Mississippi State. Defensive lineman Nick Fairley paced the defense with an interception, a fumble recovery, and three sacks. Likewise, Newton proved he could deliver in the face of a tough SEC defense. Doing two touchdown passes and rushing for 70 yards en route to a 17-14 win. Um, it was my first game on the road in the SEC environment, and and nobody told us that you know Starksville would be so hostile. It was it was such a it was such a, a hostile environment. You know it was it was something that you know I remember for the rest of my life just getting on campus and just seeing the bells, seeing the bells, seeing the bells. You know we scored on that first drive early on, and. Um, I felt real confident, but Mississippi State, they were tough, you know, they're tough to play. It's really tough to play anywhere in the SEC away, but they're really tough at home. You know, we knew that, that, that they're an option-heavy team and the type of things that we're going to have to do. We had a lot of checks set up. We had a lot of things like that set up just so that, you know, whatever they had planned for us, that we we're going to be able to go out there and, and have, a, you know, a plan for them. I mean, it was a van as vanilla a Gus Malzahn offensive game plan as I've ever seen. I think a lot of it had to do with they just didn't have at that point the confidence that Cam Newton could handle all of that. Clemson visited Jordan Hare in week three and jumped to a 17-3 halftime lead. But a third quarter offensive barrage led by Newton receiver Darvin Adams and running backs Ontario McCaleb and Michael Dyer produced 21 points. Clemson tied it up in the fourth, sending the game into overtime and a 39-yard West Byron field goal gave Auburn the dramatic 27-24 win. We knew Clemson was a, a great out-of-conference game to play. Uh, it kind of set the tone of the rest of our season of what we were going to be, what we were going to do, and we knew we needed to win that one to kind of keep climbing up in the rankings. Their front four was amazing. Their solid linebackers in their secondary was really good also. So I would say Clemson is probably the best defense we played all year. You know, after the Mississippi State game, uh, we were a little concerned about how much we ran camp. We were really were expecting our tailback to be more of carrying the football. So in the first half going to Clemson, we were going to try to take some carries off of him, and uh, well, they got after us real good. You know, it was our first really game that we. We went down, but you could just tell with our seniors and with, with, with the guys like Cam with on the offensive side of the ball that everybody had their heads up. Everybody knew that we were going to come back in this game. You could also start seeing that Cam, um, you know, he hated to lose. And you could tell uh, his competitiveness and, uh, you know, he helped us win that game. So that was the start of something that was going to be somewhat of a trend for this whole year. We found ourselves down by, what, it was 17 to 10 or something like that? And we came back. Our guys, you know, it doesn't matter uh, if we're down. They really believe that they can come back and win. The coaches didn't panic. The players didn't panic. Uh, they just came back and won the game. Auburn wins it in overtime.
12th ranked South Carolina visited 17th ranked Auburn for an early season matchup of unbeatens. The Gamecocks led most of the way, but the Tiger defense, led by Josh Bynes, forced four fourth quarter turnovers to go along with Newton's two late touchdown passes, giving Auburn the 35 to 27 win. Cam's production on the day, accounting for all five Auburn touchdowns and 176 yards rushing, sent an unmistakable signal to the Tigers' coaching staff. Their prized pupil was ready to shoulder the load. Right around the South Carolina game the first time around is when we really realized that, you know what, uh, not only is Cam a physical specimen, uh, but he's a guy that you can put a lot of, you can put a lot on his shoulder. And we kind of changed our, our way of thinking. You know, we said, hey, Cam is going to be one of our main ball carriers. We had a good idea about how he saw the field, and uh, I had a lot more confidence in his decision making. And uh, so we started really opening up the playbook and letting him, uh, you know, have more flexibility in the offense. And of course, that paid off definitely in that game. You're like, boy, that's not a quarterback. That's a running back. That's a that's a speedy wide receiver in a 6'6", 250 frame. That's the first physical indication that he was special. One play that stuck out was was the run, the dove in the end zone. That's when it was started beginning again fun to me because I, I was learning the offense as we was playing games, but that game was like, all right, I know it. I get it now. Like, okay, I know what you think, coach. Like, what you about to call and all that. But after that South Carolina game, we knew we had a very special player, and you know, we really knew that we had a chance to win all of our games after that game. Auburn steamrolled Louisiana Monroe in Week Five, racking up 52 points and more than 500 yards of total offense. Newton and receiver Emory Blake connected on a school record 94-yard scoring pass on Cam's first toss of the game, and it was all downhill from there. Week six wasn't nearly so simple, as Kentucky produced 17 second half points to tie the game midway through the fourth quarter. But Auburn assembled a 19-play, 86-yard drive in the final seven minutes to put Byram in position for the game winner. The kicker came through, pushing the eighth-ranked Tigers to 6-0. Newton posted an impressive 198 yards and four touchdowns on the ground, and suddenly the nation was taking notice. A national television audience tuned in to watch 12th-ranked Arkansas battle now 7th-ranked Auburn. Those expecting offensive fireworks would not disappoint. The Tigers led 27-21 at the half after knocking Razorback starting quarterback Ryan Mallett out of the game, but his replacement proved capable, tossing four touchdown passes to keep the Hawks competitive. 28 fourth quarter points, including a 47-yard return fumble by safety Zach Etheridge, turned the game into a blowout. When the dust settled, the two teams had combined for more than a thousand yards of offense, but Auburn got the win, 65 to 43, and moved up in the rankings to number five. Going in the game, we felt like we needed to score some points. We got off to a decent start, and Cam just made some plays in that game on his own. I mean, really running the football, taking off. They completely turned the leash free. I mean, I think they just turned him loose. And uh, after that, it was special. It really was special to watch the kid over the last half of the season. You know, you could really sense um, the fear once he got in the secondary of those guys tackling. There wasn't a whole lot of guys once he broke the line of scrimmage that really was fired up about tackling him from the get-go. Uh, I think Nick Fairley got in there and got a sack and uh, hurt Ryan Mallett, so it sent him out of the game and they had to play backup. And from there, we just knew that the game was ours. And uh, offensively, we just knew that we had to score a lot of points because Arkansas is a team that has a lot of playmakers on the outside, and they put up a lot of points, too. We would score, they would score. We would score, they would score. They would score, we would score. And it was just going back and forth, and it was like, man, when is it going to break? And, you know, we found out at the end of the game that was the, one of the, the most scored points by any SEC game ever without overtime. Cam was starting to play well, and, uh, you know, I think that's one of those games that, you know, he started, you know, refusing for our team to lose. I mean, it was one of those because it went back and forth. We were actually behind at the end of the fourth quarter, and it was like one of those deals, hey, we need to do it again. We need to score again. And he was just making sure that all of our offensive players, he wasn't going to let them let up. And uh, we finally put the game away in the fourth quarter. Another big SEC West showdown brought number six LSU to Jordan Hare. 
in a matchup pitting the conference's top defense against its top offense, Auburn elected to go with an aggressive ground attack. It paid dividends on the game's second possession when Newton put Auburn on the board with a one-yard touchdown run. LSU quickly answered, and at halftime, the game was deadlocked at 17-all. The whole week before that game, all the ESPN and all the radio stations were talking about how uh, LSU's defense is the best in the country. Auburn's finally going to get a loss because it's LSU, you know, they're known for the defense. And uh, they're a lot tougher and more physical than Auburn. And when we heard that, we were just like, uh, we can't let that happen. And we just went in there and we, Coach Malzahn said from the beginning of the game, we're going to run the ball all over these guys the whole week. And that's really all we worked on all week. And, you know, we knew we were going to be in a dog fight and that, that we were going to have to play some good football to be a good team. So, you know, coming to the stadium, it was a raucous crowd. It was, it was, it was an experience because you just, you know our fans are going to be there. But the, the way that they were just cheering for us that day, it was hot. You know, it was, it, was a, it was just a great day for football. And hard-fought game, very physical game. You know, it always is. And, um, you know, we came in knew it was going to be a tough game. They always have a great defense at LSU and that we were going to have to make some plays. With the nation and, no doubt, most Heisman voters watching, Newton put his full athletic talent on display. Faking the handoff and following his blockers, Cam outmaneuvered half a dozen defenders sprinting past All-American safety Patrick Peterson on his way to a 49-yard score. The run gave Auburn the lead, likely cemented the Heisman for Newton, and left most everyone else speechless. Now, you know, as a coach, you, you're so wrapped up in the game and you don't let yourself become a fan but on that particular play you know over the headsets I heard a couple wows I mean there's no doubt it was one of those moments that you just kind of ask yourself did that really just happen and uh, that, was a, that was a real fun moment. I was actually on a field goal team too so I played defense and I was the uh, wing on the field goal team so when the offense starts moving forward um, you know past the, past the 40 I would get up and I would personally walk over there just so I could be ready for a field goal or anything like that so I was, I was right there I was watching it from the field and, you know, I saw him make that first cut outside, and uh, I'm thinking it's a 10, 15-yarder. And, and the way he put on the Jets to get it by a guy like Patrick Peterson, you could just tell that, all right, he's special. They were rolling strong, you know, with their safeties and their coverage, and so we really wanted to run the speed sweep read. Uh, really, I should say the power read with the speed sweep to the short side. And so we did that, and uh, he kept it, cut it back. Uh, he was designed to hit downhill, but he cut it back two or three different times and just made a phenomenal play and really, uh, you know, outrun one of the better defenders in college football the last 20 yards. And it was like, dun, 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 dun. Like, it was like a pause, and I see Patrick Peterson. It was just like a whole stop right in between the play while I'm running. Like, Patrick Peterson, don't throw to his side. He's the best player in college and like that. So I was like, I was trying to run away from this, trying not to get caught. Because, but it was fun. It was a, it was a big run, and when, when obviously we needed a big play in that game. Newton up the middle. No, I'm sorry. He goes right. Still loose. Oh, did he accelerate? Oh, oh, oh my goodness! Touchdown! Auburn. A lot of great blocking downfield. Uh, getting him an opportunity to get in the open field and then for a 6'6", 250 pound man to do what he did, make the move that he made and outrun everybody to the end zone, I don't think there's any question that run will go down in Auburn football history as one of the greatest that's ever happened, particularly with everything riding on the season uh, and how huge that was in that particular game uh, as well as that one run that may have clinched him the Heisman. You know, I think it's one of the defining moments, you know, uh, last year, and I think it's one of the defining moments uh, in uh, Cam winning the Heisman Trophy. You know, I just think, you know, I don't think none of that play would have would, would have even mean a worth of nothing if my teammates didn't buy in and just say, you know what, we're going to go into not just this play, but each play in this game and just maximize our opportunity. People really don't realize that. They only see the person with the football which is all well and good because that person was me. But, you know, I tip my hat off to the Byron Isoms, the Mario Fannins, the, you know, Cody Burns. It just showed what type of team we really were. No individualism even came to, 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 to be a factor. Though a late field goal tied the game, the Tigers' Michaela played the role of closer. 
blazing down the sideline for a 70-yard touchdown that put Auburn up for good 24-17. After Ontario hit that, I think, 70-yard sweep on the outside, we were like, all right, we, we, we do got these guys there, and they're done. You know, it, uh, Cam had to ran so much that night, and, you know, they had that chase out to him, and they forgot about me. And so he had gave it, and I received it. Just, just give me a split second, and I'm gone. So once I got to the outside and I seen that end zone, I had to get to it real fast, and that's what I did. You know, Coach Chisk always would say, if you don't perform when your best is required, you're not good. You know, we need everybody to perform or be great when their greatness is required. And that game, our greatness was required and some. We beat LSU off of merely being out coached by them. I can say that. And because every single thing that LSU did, we had an answer for. We knew what they were going to do before they even did it. Next stop, Walt Hemingway Stadium, where the third-ranked Tigers were too much for struggling Ole Miss. Freshman Dyer cranked out 180 yards on the ground to go with McCaleb's 99, and receivers Blake, Adams, and Zachary combined for 16 receptions. Newton didn't play much, but managed one noteworthy highlight to add to his glowing Heisman resume. Early in the first quarter, wide receiver and former quarterback Cody Burns lofted a pass to Cam in the back right corner of the end zone. Newton hauled it in for his first and only touchdown reception of the season. Auburn wins big, 51-31. to Chattanooga was helpless against an Auburn team on a mission as the Tigers rolled up 62 points and 628 yards of offense. Zachary and Adams each had more than 100 yards receiving and El Toro Freeman led the way with eight tackles for the defense. 62 to 24 Auburn blowout moved the Tigers to number two nationally with longtime rival Georgia up next. The Tigers scored first the following week but Georgia quickly added 21 first quarter points to take the lead. Having come from behind all season long, Auburn kept its cool, outscoring Mark Rick's team 42 to 10 over the final three frames to win comfortably. Newton, McCaleb, and tight end Philip Lutzenkirchen each scored multiple touchdowns to win the comeback, and Craig Stevens led the defense with nine tackles. The Tigers won 49-31, moving to 11-0 on the season and winning a berth in the SEC championship game. No sooner had the Georgia game entered the record books than all eyes turned to Tuscaloosa, where the defending BCS national champions waited. With two losses on their season already, Alabama's hopes of repeating as champions were dim, but derailing the national title aspirations of their arch rival would surely warm the hearts of Bama fans during the long cold winter. It would be another epic installment in college football's greatest and most heated rivalry. Alabama and the Iron Bowl week is probably the toughest week out of the whole year. Um, our whole campus goes home for Thanksgiving, so it's just 24-7. It's all you think about is uh, Alabama football. It's just you and your teammates getting ready for the most hated rivalry in all sports. It's a surreal feeling. It's a feeling that, that literally 365 days a year comes down to one day. It was a feeling that we knew that, all right, we're here. We're here. And it was, it was, a, it was a calm feeling. It was a calm before the storm. But the fact it was a rivalry game, uh, we knew we would get their best effort at their place. And they got after us early. I mean, we came out flat. They had a lot to do with it. Before the game was even 15 minutes old, Auburn found itself in a deep hole. Alabama pounced, scoring 21 first quarter points and shutting down Auburn's offense. We came out with a game plan. The game plan wasn't really working because the defense really schemed us up well. You know, they were setting the right blitzes at the right time, calling the right coverages at the right time, and they just knew that some of the plays were coming that we liked to run. We was struggling to get a first down. So, you know, just to get a first down, you know, we cherished. You know, we really tried to come out and establish the run. And we had trouble running the football and put us in some third and long situations. And that's tough against, you know, a very good defense like them. And so that had a lot to do with it. The whole football game in the first probably uh, 25 minutes of play was an Auburn problem. That's all it was. It was an Auburn problem. It wasn't what Alabama was doing or not doing. It was what we weren't doing. When Nick Fairley knocked the ball loose 
from Greg McElroy, and it laid on the ground forever. And then finally, fairly falls on it in the first half. That should have been a sign uh, that that all right, things are things are starting to change. Ingram in the backfield, and they're just going to flood. Oh, he's not going to get the chance. Ball is loose, and Auburn recovers. McElroy got whacked. Early second quarter field goal put the Crimson Tide ahead 24-0, and some Auburn fans started heading towards the exits, thinking about what could have been. But things were cool on the Auburn sideline, where the Tiger players and coaches reminded themselves they'd been down, but not out, many times before. There was one, um, the instance that I remember the most is, is Nick Fairley. It was the day after Thanksgiving, and uh, early in the day, we were supposed to, to say what we were thankful for as a defensive line. And we're down 24 points, and we're sitting on the bench. Nobody's really talking. Everybody's focused on the next series. And Nick says, um, what are you thankful for? And, uh, you know, he started it off, and then we went all across the line. And, and that's the thing that, after you know, more than the comeback, more than anything, that's what I remember most for throughout the whole season is, is sitting there tw down 24 points and Nick saying, what are you thankful for? And everybody just talking. At the beginning of the season, you know, uh, we was down against Clemson. And, you know, it was, it, was a lot, it was a lot of teams, you know, we was down and you knew we had to come back and win. We was down against Georgia and we knew we had to come back and win. So it, it, it was no doubt and, and nobody on our team heart, none of our coaches heart that we was going to come back and win. Auburn finally got things going on its next drive moving 80 yards in eight plays. The Tigers finally broke through on a Newton to Blake 36 yard pass. Trailing 24 to seven at the half, no one in the Tigers locker room was panicked. Cam got up uh, and started, you know, come on guys, we've worked all year for this. We, we know what we gotta do. Uh, we just gotta go out there, take it series by series, play by play. And we just went out in the second half knowing what we had to do. Every one of the seniors and they had that desire and that, that passion to win that game. And they never fought and they never, in the whole game, there was no negative. Boy, and I'm a freshman, I'm in the back thinking, this is going to be a long game. But they wasn't thinking that. In their eyes, that's not what it's going to be. It's going to be, we're about to get a, a turnaround and we're going to turn the game over and we're going to start controlling the game in the clock. And that's what they were thinking. And I'm like, okay, well, then I'm going to be a part of it. I really felt like if there was ever a team that could do this, that was the one standing behind me. The Tigers' offense wasted no time. Newton throwing a 70-yard strike to Zachary on the second play of the third quarter to cut the lead to 10. An eight-play, 75-yard drive ending with a one-yard Newton run cut Alabama's lead to three. And with more than a quarter of football remaining, the Auburn sideline was alive with confidence. Offensively, we had a play that we knew we had in our playbook that would score against Alabama. And, uh, we ran it the second play of the first half, or the second half, and uh, it was a 60-yard touchdown to Terrell Zachary, uh, and so that brought it to 24 to 14 with only a minute taken out of the third quarter, and we just knew from there that they, they weren't going to stop us. It was just one of those things where you, you make a play and you know from that play on that we're going to win this game, and uh, just carried on all the way to the end of the game. It's like after that first touchdown, it was like, okay, we scored, but you know, it's still that. That hill's still looking high up there. God, they, they keep paddling, keep walking, and you scored the next touchdown. It was like, instead of looking like this, you know, you're looking like, dang, all right, we got it. We see the light. I seen the clouds start opening up. So I was like, everybody was on the on sideline, like, see, and like the clouds open up and the sun from the come out. It was like, you know, it's over for them now. A fumbled punt gave the tide the ball deep in Tigers' territory. But the Auburn defense, led by Nico Thorpe, Vines, and the unstoppable Fairley, stiffened, holding Alabama to a field goal in a precarious 27-21 lead. Newton and company engineered a classic 11-play 67-yard drive to take Auburn back down the field. On third and four, at the Alabama 7, Newton rolled right and found Lutzenkirchen in the left corner of the end zone for the game time score. Battle in the backfield with Newton. Cam takes the snap. Looking for the receiver. He's got Lutzen Kirkin. Touchdown Auburn! Touchdown Auburn! Lutzen Kirkin! He threw it back across the field. Seven yard play! Touchdown Tigers! We're tied at 27! Byram extra point gave Auburn the lead 28-27 
Alabama's offense got the ball two more times, but the Auburn defense was too much, holding the tie to 29 yards. As the scoreboard clock struck zero, Auburn stood at 12-0, outright champs of the SEC West Division and orchestrated the largest comeback in Tigers football history. It was uh, one of the most special moments that I've had as a coach after that game when you're playing your rival, one of the best teams in the country with a great coaching staff and, uh, and what that game meant. It, wasn't, it was bigger than just that one game because we wanted the dream to stay alive about winning national championship. I remember staying on the field for a good hour afterwards, you know, just running around and, you know, just, you know, celebrating with the fans and definitely a, a time and a, a moment that I'll never forget in my life. And to be the guy that, that caught that pass and uh, kind of forever wrote my name in the Auburn football book for uh, a little seven-yard catch that was wide open, which was a really easy catch for me, so... Uh, it was just awesome, and then just kind of seeing all the Alabama fans around me go from excited 24 to nothing to just all their heads were hung, all their players' heads were hung. Uh, it, it was just a great feeling for me. It was like, man, we, we've done it, but we still had two games left. Their confidence at an all-time high. The Tigers approached the SEC title game as a team that simply wouldn't be denied. Auburn scored 28 in the first half, 28 in the second, and simply overpowered a South Carolina team that never knew what hit it. Newton's four touchdown passes and two touchdown runs earned him game MVP honors as Auburn won big 56-17. to The game's not going to change. They're not going to change who they are. We're not going to change who we are. It's going to be a matter of executing better than we did the first time. So with a couple of wrinkles in the game plan, both offensively and defensively, we went into the game. And I thought we probably played at that point in time maybe the best all-around football we've played all year long. Well, we really just kept it rolling from that second half of the Iron Bowl into the SEC Championship game. We knew we had beaten uh, South Carolina before. We knew we would get their best effort. We just tried to predict how they were going to, the adjustments they were going to make uh, from the first game. Four quarters of football separating us from what we talked about at the beginning of the season. When you have four quarters separating the team that will strive so hard for something, you know, we weren't going to be able to be denied that night. I'd say in the SEC Championship, it was just like really at the, the peak of our offense performance because um, we, we felt like we've, we've been against everyone and we've beat them and there's no one that can stop us. I mean, we were really clicking. Uh, made a couple plays early on that helped us uh, stay aggressive on the offensive side. Our defense played well and then of course, the uh, Big Ben play right you know, at the end of the first half just kind of gave us some separation in the second half, came out and put the game away and was really able to enjoy you know, the fourth quarter uh, from a coach and player standpoint, which you know, there wasn't a whole lot of those you know, last year. Auburn entered the BCS national title game, finally getting the respect that had so eluded it during the regular season. Now ranked number one and boasting a Heisman winner as its quarterback, the Tigers hope to become the fifth straight SEC team to win the coveted crystal ball. With weeks to prepare for the title bout, Chiswick and his staff knew the second-ranked Oregon Ducks would be ready. A couple things stand out about the championship game. There was 36 days off in between the SEC championship and the national championship, and that's longer than a spring practice. So, you know, we're real focused on keeping our time in, and Coach Chiswick did a great job of, of uh, managing the days off and the days we practice and all that. I get a call. I get somebody, a reporter say, Nosa, Nosa, come here, a quick interview, please. I come to the side. He says, uh, how does it feel to know that you're going to be playing in a game that's probably going to be 50 points to 50 points going into the fourth quarter, and, and, and it's going to be an offensive shootout? And, you know, for me, Personally, I know I know what the question was. I know I know what he was trying to say. But you know, as as a defensive player, you, you see it and you're like, oh man, 50 points? Like, yeah, you know, you know, you're not giving us a, a shot at stopping them. But once you once you step on that field, once that first kickoff goes off and all those uh, camera flashes are just going off all around you, it's it's just so surreal. You know, you, it's one of the scenes you work and dream your whole life to to get to that point, and you're finally there, and you realize it, and then you just want to make the best out of that opportunity. It's kind of surreal. You walk in the stadium, you know, half orange, half 
green, whatever their color they're wearing, and you see Oregon's, you know, uniforms, and just being in that atmosphere, you know, playing in that stadium, that that beautiful stadium, and being in Arizona at that point, you know, where no no other college teams were playing, you know, everyone's watching you, all eyes are on you. After a defensive standoff in the first quarter, Auburn got on the board with scoring strikes from Newton to Burns and Blake in the second. Late in the half, the Tigers came up short on fourth and goal at the Ducks one. But a Mike Blount safety on the next play gave the Tigers two points. At halftime, Auburn led 16 to 11. First drive, uh, I made a pretty big play on the third down. And, and, and I feel like, you know, we all just we all just got together and, and, and the interception the next drive and we just we knew that we can go out there and make plays and why not make plays on the biggest stage you know it's the biggest stage of our lives and everybody was just so amped and so ready just to go out there and consume the moment and and, and win you know such a big game and everybody just went out there and put their best foot forward you know that's what the best do uh, we went into the game very confident we felt like physically uh, you know, with the mentality that we have to use week in and week out and have to have here in this league every week, uh, we just felt like physically, you know, we could, we could win the game, we could dominate the game. They're running a lot of my specific coverage and it, it gets me one-on-one -on -one with the defensive end. So, you know, a defensive end drops back in coverage trying to cover a slot receiver, it's hard for them. Under two minutes to go, Blake in motion right to left. Bam the throw. Bam feeling pressure. Eludes the man. Wide open. He's got it right. Walks in. Touchdown, Auburn! As soon as the ball was snapped, I knew I was going to be wide open. It was just a matter of fact if the corner went with me or went with Darvin. And he ended up going with Darvin. So I ended up being wide open and I caught the ball and turned around. I was in the end zone. Tigers boosted their lead on the opening drive of the second half with a West Byron field goal, 19-11. Both defenses tightened up through most of the third and fourth quarters, but Oregon finally broke through with an eight-yard scoring pass and added the two-point conversion to tie the game up. With 2.33 remaining and a national title at stake, Cam Newton and the Auburn offense took possession at their own 25. Newton completed a pass to Blake for 15. Then Dyer ran for what appeared to be a short game, but his knee never touched, and 37 yards later, the Tigers found themselves at the Oregon 23. After short games by Dyer and Newton, Dyer, the game's offensive MVP, ran up the middle for 16. With 10 seconds remaining, the ball at the Oregon won, Chizik placed his national title hopes on his field goal unit and the foot of kicker, Wes Byron. We got to the fourth quarter and, you know, they had just scored and uh, we were going to figure out it was tied up and we were just, you know, we just needed to go down there and get a field goal and that's really what we were thinking, you know, just move it and keep the clock going and, you know, just try to go out and waste the time down and just try to get a field goal and then we really fall into the end, so. And then Wes Byron just comes up and he nails the field goal and he seals the game for us. And it was good to see our kids after so much time and so much energy, so much team building, so many ups and downs in our season, be able to, to culminate that with the national championship that people talk about all the time and they dream about all the time, but very few can do. Byron waits for the snap in the place. There it is. The kick is up. The kick is good. Auburn wins. Final score, 22 to 19. Only two years earlier, Gene Chizik had been a curious choice to coach the Auburn Tigers. His quarterback, Cam Newton, had been lost in the world of junior college football. Today, they and their teammates and coaches were champions. It's huge for Auburn, you know, being the little brother in the state in Alabama who's considered the big brother. It's just huge for us to, to win one, especially right after Alabama had won one. And to keep it in the state's huge uh, for the state of Alabama in general. The seniors took it to a whole different level, and uh, that's what made the season, you know, you know, special and unique because you know they're, they're, they they were determined to make this season. You know, they started off with those seniors. You know, they were determined to to make some out of it, and that's what they did. Just to be with those guys in the locker room, you know, be with those guys when when nobody else really thought we can do it, and we went out there and we did it. 
you know, that's the most, if, as a competitor, I think that's the, that's the most, most beneficial moment in somebody's life when somebody tells you what you can't do and you go out there and do it. The happiest moment of my life, really. Um, really, last year I was kind of mostly dreaming about you know, that moment, you know, where we ever get that chance. And, you know, coming in this year, all the hard work that we put in, and it was just amazing. I mean, God's really blessed me and uh, for me to just to be a part of Auburn football and be a part of a season like that is just, uh, it's really unbelievable feeling. People don't understand the feeling and to be one of the main people to be a part of something, like it, it makes the whole experience even better. I'm helping Cam reach the success that he did, but you know, He's just an amazing football player, so um, just being around him was a blessing. He was very coachable. Uh, you know, he's one of the better players, if not the best player to ever play college football. And what stands out to me is he did everything you ask him to do with a great attitude. There's not one time he was questioning, why are we doing this, why are we doing that, why, or even a bad frown on his face. He said, yes, sir, no, sir, and he did exactly what he was coached to do. I don't think that I could accurately describe what it does for our fan base and what it does for the Auburn family that's been waiting 53 years for that moment. You know, I kept telling the players and the coaches, I said, you know, you guys, you live in my dream and our dream, the players, because we, you know, that was our goal every year was to win a national championship. When I think of Auburn, I think of just one big family, you know, everyone's got everyone's back. Our fans are there for the players. Our players are there fighting for our fans each Saturday when we're out there. And It's simply relationships and just being able to conquer so many relationships and meet so many different people and learn from so many different people. A lot of universities, they, they, they see it, they say it, you know, they preach it, but they don't really live it. And at, at this university, everybody lives it. And everybody's, everybody's all through and through. And, you know, everybody says War Eagle, and they, and, they, and they really mean it. Undefeated season, SEC championship, Heisman Trophy winner, Outland Trophy winner, national championship. For 2010, the best season in the history of Auburn football. <laughs> So far, I think it gives the Auburn family a great sense of pride, a great sense of accomplishment, and a, and a great sense of hope for, for down the road in the future. Side of midfield. Here's Cam on the fake, right up the middle, breaks a tackle at the 40, stays on his feet, 35, 30, 25, 20. Peterson, the one man to beat at the five. He is in. Touchdown, Auburn. Flash that smile, Cam. Tigers lead. Wow. And he drug the All-American Patrick Peterson from the five-yard line. Thank you.